And lo, vile beasts did rise. leaving naught in their wake but blood and ash. Sun scorches earth and boils seas. And our sins ascend unto the heavens. Three dooms to unmake all we were. burns. The final days are truly upon us. My friends, I trust you have heard the news. We have. What can you tell us of the situation, Your Excellency? Last night, the isle was rocked by tremors, and the earth itself cried out. Aloft, the heavens began to burn. From all about, unholy beasts, the likes of which we had never seen, came forth in fury and rage. No. To say they came forth would be inexact. The people of Radzat Han themselves transformed into these baleful fiends. Though the phenomenon was observed throughout our lands, the first creature, the largest and most dreadful of the lot, wrought havoc upon us here in our fair city. Though they bear superficial resemblance to divinities of legend, they are ungodly abominations. The people decry them as blasphemies. The large one's rampage has since taken it to the northern reaches of the island. I mean to dispatch our radiant host in an attempt to quell the threat. And what of Vritra? Vitra too makes for the north of his own accord, and yet... He knows the blasphemy and its minions were but yesterday his beloved people. I pray his boundless compassion and mercy does not deter him from taking unenviable but necessary action. Understood. I ask that you allow us to aid you in quelling this threat. You would risk your lives to help us yet again? I have no words to express my gratitude. Our regiments approach the north from several directions, with a number of units set to depart from the docks of Yedlimad. They will make landfall in an area of dense jungle but one can expect to encounter dangers even beyond the fell beasts we hunt. I leave you to your preparation. You will find me at the docks when you are ready to depart. We're as prepared as we'll ever be. Let's go.
as I feared. What is it? The beast was there, and now it is no more. Yes? Indeed. We saw it plain. But you didn't, did you? I saw nothing. Not the blasphemy that perished here, nor the other men turned beasts. And because of this, I now see all too well. There is no ether. Where the creatures should be, I saw naught but emptiness. Emptiness? But that would mean... Recall the words of the Watcher. "'Twas a stagnancy of ether, a cessation of flow leading to decay and absence, that led the ancients to conclude their star was dying. This is the same phenomenon. The instant these people are seized by the transformation, their ether begins to rot and crumble away like dried mud. Until, from their corporeal forms to their very souls, naught remains. But the beast spoke with its dying breath. Surely at least a sliver of the man it was endured. Mayhaps so. But even if the process was incomplete, it was little more than a faint residue. Gods be good. You're saying they cannot be saved. Not by any means known to me. Or by any means at all, like as not. For there is naught left to save. They return not even to the ethereal sea. Vitra, my friends, I am heartened to see you safe. You put your secret at risk. Those closest to me already know the truth. A truth I must now share with one and all. Vitra, calamity has come to Razatan. Our fair nation is rent by screams of pain and despair. More than ever, we require a strong leader to shepherd us through the storm. Reveal your true self to our people, Vitra, and guide us to salvation. What madness is this, I one? Thou dost forget thyself. Were we to reveal our duplicity, it would do naught but foster confusion and chaos. Nay, I shall remain the Satrap's loyal ally and do battle with the beasts. Easing hearts and leading the people to safety is thy task and thine alone. I ask that you remain at Ahewan's side, and render unto him what aid you may. I know not what lies ahead, but without you, Radzetan will not survive.
Take me with you. I am as at home fighting in the air as I am on land. Take me with you. Were well, my words unclear, I require no assistance. Thy place is at Ahiwan's side. Estinian, here. The last thing you ever wanted, a Link Pearl. We'd gain much from knowing your elevated perspective. And it'll keep you from getting lonely, which I know you love. <laughs> you heard the man. Seems I'm coming with you after all. Then I pray thy grip is iron. Be it on thy head if thou dost chance to fall. Fair enough. Now, shall we? Here it is as Vitra says, we will not survive this on our own, while I am loath to impose upon you again. I would insist if you did not. It is the very reason we have come. Then once more I find myself without words to thank you properly. Let us return to the capital and plan our next course of action. There you are. You've spoken with the survivors. Indeed. We thought to share what we have gleaned, that we might together gain a greater understanding of present circumstances. Fortuitous timing. Alize and I completed our own investigations not long ago. Then we should take a moment to compare notes. Shall we begin with the two of you? So the merchant Karzal was gravely concerned about his business in the days preceding his untimely end. The tales we heard were much the same. The first victims to be changed into blasphemies were all overcome with anguish of one manner or another. Then those who saw their loved ones stolen before their eyes succumbed to a similar panic setting in motion a chain of transformations. Fear, unease, despair. These negative feelings serve as a catalyst. If so, then it is not unlike the calamity that befell the ancients. With their creation magics, they unwittingly gave form to untold horrors. Had they simply lost control, Surely it would have manifested in many forms, not all of them monstrous. Yet somehow, this phenomenon is triggered solely by the darkness in their hearts, a common thread with what we now witness. Common, but not identical. While the beasts the ancients faced were forged with magic alone, those of today are born of sentient beings. Why remains to be seen, but there is one fundamental difference between us and our predecessors. Our souls are sundered, whereas theirs were not. Perhaps that single variable makes all the difference. 
If I may, there was another detail that troubled me. We have it on good authority that Karl Zahl's transformation took place before the skies began to burn. What? If that's true, then the situation's more dire than we realized. It means even if there's no ominous sign presaging the final days, anyone, anywhere, has the potential to become a beast. Even in lands we thought safe, even as we speak, Look! It's the Sartrap! The Sartrap! Thank the heavens! My countrymen, I am relieved and heartened to see you strong and safe. While the danger has not yet passed, far from it, allow me to assure you that the beasts that raged within the city walls have been exterminated to the last. Outside this sanctuary, the brave men and women of the Radiant Host and our dragon ally continue to battle our unholy foes. I pray these tidings put your minds at ease and help you calm your hearts. Have faith that we shall soon conquer this terrible trial. Your Excellency, is there any word from Palaka's stand? My grandson was bound for there yesterday and I, I worry for his life. We are still awaiting a report, but I promise you, as soon as I have ought to share, You, Your Excellency, I bring grave news. You are? I, I'm Matya of, of Akali, a humble fisherman. Ah, I remember you from our first visit. Uh huh? Wait, y you're. But. But no, that can wait. When the skies turned red, I set off for Palakistan, fearing for the safety of a friend. But as I drew near the village, I saw dreadful beasts all about. No! God have mercy! Your Excellency! Save my grandson, I beg of you! We will spare no effort to save all we can, but you must remain calm. Calm? You tell me to be calm? You saw those beasts? They tore our bravest warriors limb from limb! What if we are too late, huh? Did they catch him? Sink their fangs into him? The fangs! <gasps> Get away from her! Now! them before it spreads we'll handle this see the townspeople to safety run as fast as you can
Be strong, my friends! Fear not, for we will defeat these abominations! Brave men and women of the Radiant Host, lend your Stola and thank with your aid. Let not a single beast escape. The rest of you, flee this place. Carry the wounded if you must. Head indoors or underground. Above all, stay calm. No beast will follow you. We will see to that. Alphano! Alize! Leave the city to us and make for Palika's stand at once! Matsya, show my friends to the village. I promise you, they're more capable than the host's finest. R right. Go with them, will you? We will save these people, as many as we can. to trouble us here. It's me. How fare you below? Understood. I will inform Vritra. Chaos and panic sweep Raz at Han. And many more have succumbed to the transformations. Amidst the fray, Ahuan fell, protecting a grief-stricken father. <sighs> My friends fight alongside your radiant host to secure the capital. Beasts have been sighted in Palakistan as well. We have divided our forces in hopes of quelling the threat there. Of small solace is that we now know what triggers the transformation. As my companions tell it. So it is the very fear and despair in their hearts which inflicts this abhorrent punishment upon them. A nightmare from which my children will never awake. O oh, capricious and cruel fate, they are undeserving of such condemnation. Will you wallow in sorrow or rise to the occasion? Razat Han is leaderless. Before he passed, 
Ahawan sought to reveal the truth to his people. Honor his wishes. To what end? To breed a new conflict between dragon and man? These claws could reduce thee to shreds with a touch. These jaws crush thy bones to dust. Only through my proxy could I walk with my children. Without him, I am a bringer of fear. No different from the beasts which beleaguer them. Perhaps so. Only in death were Hreisvelger and Shiva united. Indeed, whenever man and dragon have come together, death has ever been the inevitable result. It was our fear of your kind that sparked a nigh endless war. Fear and hate of which Nidhogg drank deep as he laid waste to my homeland. And in turn, I took my revenge on his brood. Blood for blood, pain for pain. I thought nothing of theirs, only of mine. And yet, were the chasm between us too vast and too deep, Kreisvelger would not have borne his sail to battle and our rescue. He would never have entrusted a mortal champion with one of his eyes, and the Dragonsong War would still rage on. And I would still wage a never-ending war of violence and vengeance. The future of our star be damned. I cannot speak for Ahuan's greater goals, yet I know that he served you, served your people, long and true. In this time of unprecedented crisis, he turned to you. You could do worse than to place your trust in him. It will not be easy, but the future of Radzid Han hangs in the balance. It's all or nothing! Courage, friend. The pain will pass. Has anyone seen Mevan? Could she be? We've dealt with all the blasphemies and made certain no villagers are still in hiding. Good work. We've otherwise tended to the wounded as best we can. What will become of us? Help is on the way, surely. We may have to abandon our homes now, but we will return, someday. But where can we go? Is anywhere even safe? That I cannot say. But I can. Nowhere's safe. Run all you like, but there's no escape in these things. And even if I could... <laughs> It's too late for my family. <laughs> this isn't good. The more they dwell on the tragedy, the more likely we are to lose them too. My friends, this 
This is a place of worship. Should your heart quake with sadness, cast your mind to the heavens and remember. Remember the teachings of the old gods. Did they not implore us to stand fast when waves of sorrow break against our shores? Know this, my children. There is more ugliness than beauty in this world. To live is to suffer, to drink of calamity and drown in anguish, to toil and be tested, always and ever. Tis a perilous path you walk. Death lurks in the dark and is the sole promise that awaits at journey's end. You will tremble with terror. You will weep tears of anger and despair. But do not avert your eyes. See your life for what it is. Then will you see how the hardships make you strong. Every doubt reforged as scales for your armor. Every agony to temper your blade. Thank you, lad. We'd almost forgotten who we are. My undying gratitude to you as well, my friends. You were searching for Mevan, no? We must return home. I pray you help the boy find his friend. Gladly. We dispatched what beasts we could, but the roads are still dangerous. Stay together and go in safety. That was very impressive, what you did back there. Those words seemed to resonate with your people. They should. They were the first spoken unto our ancestors by the divinity of legend. I'm easily upset, and fish are wont to flee a temperamental hand, so I recite the teachings over and over to calm myself. They're lovely and inspiring to hear, though I imagine they were born of great misfortune. They are born of life. There's as much bad as good in it. More, many would attest. All the more reason to appreciate the good when you can. I won't argue with that. In darkness, seek joy. Surrender not to sadness and see beyond despair. Walk free, and bear the light for others to follow. And with that, let us see if we can't find Mervyn. Did you see? That beast was chasing someone.
That's her. No, I'm I'm sure of it. Levan! Don't please! She's so cold, Elphino. The child is alert, and I see no wounds, and yet... <sighs> she grows weaker. My spells can do no more. What she needs is a change of clothes and a warm bed. We must hurry back. <laughs> Not now! Matsya, take the child. It appears we've made enough noise to be heard for miles around. More will be upon us ere long. We make our stand here. Matya, can you take her back to the village? But the child? All, all by myself? You can't be serious. The beasts will follow you home unless we stop them here. And so we shall. Be strong, Matsya. Her life is in your hands. Right. I... I can do it. I know you can. We'll keep them busy, Matsya. Go! Quickly! Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. To live is to suffer, to drink of calamity. It is a perilous path. Death looks in the dark. No! I'm not afraid! I'm not afraid! You're not avert your eyes. See, see your life for what it is. See how the hardships make you strong. Every doubt reforged. Every agony. <sighs> the divinity 
Nay, but one who would deliver thee just the same. Please, you must save the child. She is all that remains of Mevan and Grasif. Please. Well, well. Seems the babe's taken a liking to you. our friends as we flew in. They appeared to be holding their own against the Horde. Right. That's the last of them. We should hurry and find Matsya. What, like divine aid? A fine battle it must have been. Shame I missed it. Estinian, it was you who came to Matsya's aid. I was only along for the ride. Vritra was the one who saw the boy was in need. The two are headed back to the village. Where the worm will honor Ahiwan's wishes and finally reveal himself to his people. Perhaps so. Will you go and join them? There's something I need to do first. Mervyn gave her life so that her child might live. She deserves better than to be left to drift alone. She deserves to be laid to rest beside her husband, at least. Will you help me? Look, someone's coming. People of Razathan, it warms my heart to see so many brave, resilient souls before me. Today, I would share with you a great revelation. But before I do, I must make a humble request. Do not be alarmed, nor avert your eyes. See the one I unveil for who he is, and know that he means you no harm. Very well. I dare say it can't be worse than the horrors we've already seen. Many thanks. A dragon! People of Radzathan, I am Vritra, 
and for years uncounted had this isle served as mine abode. Tis as the Satrap's ally I am known. Today, I would reveal the truth unto you. Let us hope they accept him. If I am hearing this right, you were the satrap all along? Vashan! I mean... Master Vitra... The, the, does your divine eye really see all? Nay, child. While my eye hath borne witness to the whole of our nation's history, to its future I am blind as thee. of which we have never known is come to Fafnir, our home. Friends and loved ones have been taken from us. I, too, have lost my closest confidant. Ahawan loved this land and served it with dignity till his dying breath. A nobler satrap there will never be. For so long, I lacked the courage to face you. I will not easily earn your trust. This I know. And yet, I cannot sit idly by and abandon rugs that harm to her fate. A font of boundless vibrancy, this jewel of the ocean. Since time immemorial, has she glittered with every color imaginable. To this dragon, slumbering in his dark lair, t'was a mesmerizing sight, and one that brought no end of joy to my heart. This calamity has stolen too much from you already. Yet so long as you live, the light of Radzat Han will never be extinguished. I pray you let me watch over it. Over you. I do not know you, Dragon, but I thank you for speaking the truth to us. As divinities, both Manusha and Riga once joined together, so too do I believe that hand in hand, we can overcome this ordeal and welcome an era of peace. A sight that would have surely brought a smile to his ale's face. Indeed. Excuse me, but I must speak with the Sartrap at once. Father! You have suffered dearly of late, yet you must endeavor to look beyond these losses to the future you yet have. 
On behalf of the Forum of Charlian, I come with a proposal by which you, the people of Radzat Han, might be saved. I say again, I must speak with your satrap. I beseech you, take me to him with all possible haste. I am satrap here. Speak thy proposal. All present shall hear and judge. If I have given offense, then I apologize. First, allow me to share with you what knowledge we have of the phenomenon responsible for your woes. The final days. It is an affliction of stagnancy and rot, sown into the currents of the star. Though the first prominent manifestation was here, in Thavner, it will invariably spread to every corner of the world. The Forum was forewarned of this apocalypse several centuries ago. Thenceforth, my predecessors sought to prepare for the end times in the only conceivable fashion, by securing a means of escape. Escape this star? What madness is this? Tis by no means madness. With the coming of the seventh umbral calamity, the true nature of the red moon Dalamud was revealed. That it was an artificial construct of ancient Alag. But what of the silver moon? This celestial satellite is yet another technological marvel fashioned and maintained by ancient allies. A ship that will sail the heavens and deliver our people from destruction. And by our people, I speak not only of Charlian. We mean to save every man, woman, and child it is within our power to save. Including you, our dear friends of Radzat Han. Recent events necessitate adjustments be made, and quickly, but we can and will escort you safely to the moon. Long has thy forum been allies to Thavnir. I trust thou dost not extend this offer lightly. Yet I wonder, is this truly the way? Is there a future to be built for us beyond this star, our father deemed the last bastion of hope? It is for that very reason I come before you and your people. To answer any and all of your questions. To offer my assurances and allay your fears. Though, if you wish the best for your people, I advise you to render your decision swiftly. Show our friends to Megadota. They are to be received as honored guests. Worry not. Whatever decision is reached, your paths shall be yours to decide. Until then, heed the warning of these brave heroes. Guard your hearts against fear and despair, for it is within such fertile soil that the seeds of blasphemy find purchase. Remain calm and attend to your daily tasks. I shall return anon. We'll do as you say, Master Vitra. We believe in you. Oh, 
You're still here. What a relief. Nidana, what's the matter? Has something happened at Palika's stand? Oh, no, not that I know of. I just hope to hear your thoughts on a theory of mine. All who undergo the transformation are drained of their ether, yes? What is it then that gives these beasts the strength to carry on as they do? Logically, they must be drawing upon an alternate form of vital energy. That put me in mind of our earlier conversation, when I tried to explain the essence which many confuse with ether. Akasha, yes, I remember. The unseen gift bestowed from on high. An energy influenced solely by emotion. Yes, yes. In this instance, negative ones set Akasha into motion, thereby infusing the beasts with vitality. I posit this as the mechanism by which the beasts are born and sustained. Ah, do you still have that flower? If we accept that it once shone bright by drawing upon Akasha, influenced by the thoughts of those nearby, then fear, terror, despair, negative emotions so powerful as to suffocate it, permeated the air in this place. You must be very careful. The forces which drive the final days may be beyond our ability to perceive. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you like that. At any rate, I will continue my research into Akasha. Do temper your expectations, however. There are sadly few detailed studies upon which I may draw. Formulating a new theory as you have is itself no small feat. I wish you well in your endeavors and pray you take care. Thank you. You stay safe as well, yes? Till next we meet, and we will meet again. So blasphemies now plague all the realm. It will only get worse if what Father said is true, as it did in Amarot. If that's our model, then shouldn't we expect the effects to grow more severe as it feeds off its own spread? As if people transforming into those monstrosities wasn't bad enough. If the flora and fauna, if the land itself turned against us. No one would survive. Here's your order, friend. May you find comfort in these dark times. Where do we go from here? If there's one thing we've learned, Fighting blindly and simply reacting to what comes will accomplish nothing. We must find a solution that addresses the fundamental cause. Before our strength is exhausted, before this crisis spirals out of control. Is there something, anything we've overlooked? If there is an answer, Heidelin herself will have it. Twas she who bound Zodiac and forestalled the final days. Alas, we have heard naught from her since the Tower of Babel. Whether she cannot or will not speak, I can only speculate. Even the flower she gave us is no more.
so advised the Watcher. But what could be the significance of that name? It is entirely unfamiliar to me. To me as well. It meant something to the ancients, though. In our time. Most surely. Yet I do not recall a single mention of it in the records of Anida. Another dead end. And quite literally. It's not as if there are any ancients living we could go and ask. Not alive as such, but not quite dead. Elidibus. I sealed him in the white horosite of the Crystal Tower back on the first. Contained within that reservoir of ether that maintains it, ether that is returned little by little to the sea, naught may remain of his soul. However, if part of it lingers, we might be able to speak with him there. I know we can no longer make that journey, but you, my friend, still can. Thank you, my friend. That would mean much to me. If nothing else, should we learn the first is safe? We'll have that much more reason to keep fighting the good fight. That said, the odds are not in our favor, to say the least. Which is why we're fortunate to have Uriage up there on the moon, working hard to make all the necessary preparations for our departure, should it come to it. And why we have nothing to lose by staying the course till the last instant. Indeed, to the last, let us all do what we can. I will consult with Master Matoya and see if she knows of a way to reach Hydaelyn from the Ethereal Sea. And I will visit the nation's leaders and attempt to ascertain how far the final days have progressed elsewhere. Keep me abreast of your findings. I can seek out and slay the worst of the immediate threats, if only to slow the spread. Unease, terror, despair. Try as we might to suppress them, these emotions will return to Harrius time and time again. But when they do, remember this. Your friends and loved ones are out there somewhere, sharing in your struggle. You are not alone. So ends the brief respite before the next revelation. Yes, so much left for you to see. Where beginning ends and end begins. <laughs>